I think the New York scene has always been a mixed bag, you know. I mean, a lot of stuff cutting edge has happened here back in the day of CBGBs and all that. There's still a lot of great artists coming here. I think the market has changed somewhat. I mean, everyone wants to play New York and stuff. I don't know that I would recommend to a singer-songwriter, you know, move to New York and you'll make it now because I think the scene's crowded like everywhere else. And I think there's so many other alternatives. You have the MySpace. You know, you have a lot of other ways to kind of be out there without actually having to starve for your art anymore and uh, hopefully the cream will ri you know the cream rises to the top but um, you know the club back in the day when I was playing in a band again you're going back like 30 something years but there'd be two bands us and another band and we'd do a set and they'd do a set then we'd do a set and they'd do a set and we'd all move our equipment out at the end of the night or you might stay there for two nights now you know there's eight people or six people on a bill and each band has to move its stuff in play and move the stuff out next guy move the stuff in move the stuff out I, you know to me that's crazy i mean it's, it's just such a hustle and it's hard to kind of build a following that way so i don't know and i, I know i always hear that some clubs either don't pay you or they make you pay to, to get on a bill or stuff like that not all of them but you know i've heard these stories so you know, I think unless there was something more than just trying to make it from scratch, I, I wouldn't recommend like coming to New York or anywhere for that matter. Maybe Nashville, a, a little bit more. There's that understanding that country songwriters, you know, have to have sort of do some time in, in Nashville and get to know the other writers. But there's a lot more collaboration and that kind of stuff that goes on there. I don't know that there's as much of that going on in New York. But again, you know, everybody tries to come through here and play at some point. Again, I don't know about relocating to play here. Um, New York's crazy and it's expensive and it, you know, it'd be tough to, to break in. But to come through and play, you know, if you were playing in different cities, to come and play a few gigs might be an interesting thing to do. And you never know, you, know, you may just catch the attention of someone that separates you from all the MySpace people. Well, I think for the different kinds of areas of the business, I mean, back in the day there were a lot of recording studios and engineers and stuff. There's not so much of that anymore. Um, some of the clients that I represent, you know, that used to be studio musicians, that whole scene has kind of faded away a bit because a lot of people can do it on Pro Tools. You know, they can manipulate things and if they don't play the instrument, they can play it on the keyboard and make it sound like a guitar and, you know, and then speed it up and slow it down. They don't necessarily need a great guitar player to get the feel anymore. They can manipulate it till they get the feel. For better or for worse, you still have to have a musical sense to know what's good and what's bad, but you don't necessarily need to get a certain guitar player when he's available to do what you need him to do anymore. So a lot of those musicians are now playing in the pits of the theater. So some of the guys I had that used to be studio musicians that do music on the side, they're now playing at the different shows, Hairspray and whatever else. Uh, which is not necessarily a bad thing, it's just that the scene translated into that. So maybe if you were a, a real kind of player's player and you wanted to get into that scene, you know, you may come up and get into the Broadway show area. But again, you're talking about union scale, you're talking about a fairly limited, you know, amount of people that do it because not every Broadway show is even a musical. And you're talking about fairly small orchestras in there. So, you know, again, it, you'd have to kind of have a target of what you were going for if you were going to really come up and do that kind of thing. And I think engineers and producers, more and more, you know, they're buying Pro Tools and they're kind of doing it in their own world, in their own basement. Not, you know, again, not as a bad thing, but because that freedom, that democracy is there. You know, you can, you can spend a few grand and you can get your own equipment. And then if you've got the ears to make something happen, you know, you can make your product and do it yourself without coming and interning in a big studio. Because those, like I said, the few, all the big record labels, Sony and RCA that used to have studios, they got rid of their own studios. They don't, even they don't want to carry that overhead. You know, they're letting you, the little guy, do it and bring it to them. And they're marketing and promoting the product that you created. They're not creating the product so much anymore.